What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Show. In 2016, hardware developer Crix released the EverDrive GBA, a flash cart designed with the express purpose of playing the entire library of Game Boy Advance games. In the next few years that followed, the firmware has been updated numerous times to expand upon the functionality well beyond just playing GBA games, all in the palm of your hand. In this video, I will walk you through the process of getting your EverDrive GBA X5 and X5 Mini updated for 2022 and beyond. I'll also give you some simple tips to get you started after setup. Links to the tools and downloads used in the description below. Getting started, you'll want to make sure that you have a large enough SD card to hold your games. I recommend getting a micro SD card that is 32 gigabytes or more. If you're interested in playing the emulated games on the flash card, bump this up to 64 gigabytes. This will allow you to get the full set of games for the Game Boy Advance, and then the full set of games for the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Nintendo NES, Sega Master System, and Game Gear. The card must be formatted as FAT32. If you're using an SD card that is larger than 32 gigabytes, you'll need to use a formatter tool. I recommend you use the formatter tool known as FAT32 Format. Download the formatter tool, then format the SD card, renaming it something that you can remember. In this example, I named it ED underscore GBA. With the SD card taken care of, head to the web store for the EverDrive X5 Mini. Here you will find the latest firmware, which is of the time of this video, version 1.16. Click on OS Update, then download the zip file at the bottom of the page. Extract the entire GBA Sys folder from the zip onto the root of your SD card. You may also take out the time to add emulators that will allow you to play other console games on the flash cart. There are various locations on the net where you'll need to download these emulators. To start, head to Dwedit's GitHub page, then navigate to the Goomba Color link. Click on Releases, then download the zip file. Head back to the main page, then click on Pocket NES, then Releases. Click on the latest build, then download the zip file. Next, head to the website known as Zofar's Domain. Click on the link Emulators on Consoles, then Game Boy slash Advance. Click on Sega Master System slash Game Gear emulators, then SMS Advance. Download the binary zip file. Once you have each zip, you'll need to unpack and rename each .gba file so the cart can locate and utilize them. Extract the GBA file from each zip.
For the Goomba.gba and smsadvance.gba files, create a copy of each. Rename the pocket NES file as nes.gba. Rename the first Goomba file as gb.gba, then the second as gbc.gba. For the SMS Advance files, rename the first copy sms.gba and the second as gg.gba. Place all .gba files in the gba sys slash emu folder. The ROM file extensions that are recognized are .gb, .gbc, .nes, .sms, and .gg. Place all of your ROM files onto the SD card. The file system supports creating nested subfolders as you wish. Pressing select on the file browser will open up the main menu options for the cart. Here you will be allowed to change your settings with the X5. The options will provide you with a few settings. You can swap your action buttons and enable a quick boot option which will skip the BIOS loading. You can also hide the GBA sys folder to prevent tampering and sort your files. Under Recently Played, you will get a list of 15 games that you have played previously. Selecting Start Random Game will boot a random game from within the folder that you're in. Selecting Diagnostics will run a self-check on the cart to ensure everything is running properly. Upon highlighting a file and pressing the A button, a submenu will pop up with a few more options. You may start a game and check the ROM information. Selecting ROM settings will allow you to change the save type and enable the real-time clock per game. You'll want to leave the save type off unless you're having issues with saving on some games. Finally, you may also check the hex values or delete the file from your cart. The X5 is capable of playing most Game Boy Advance games without issue. This includes GBA video and files that have been converted to play with this format. Game files must be smaller than 32 megabytes in size. Files that are larger than 32 megabytes are not supported. The classic NES series games work, but they must be the 4 megabyte versions. Games that have special sensors and hardware features will run, but are unplayable in various states. There are no save states, nor are there any in-game menu options for the X5. However, if you are using an analog pocket, you can make use of its save state feature to capture states on GBA games. Finally, there are no cheats that are accessible without modifying the games for that specific purpose. Through Goomba Color, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games can be played on the X5 without issue. Games are run on a 1x1 one one pixel mode and you aren't allowed to scale the image beyond this. Pressing the L and R buttons will pull up Goomba's menu, allowing you to set and change a number of settings. You may set Turbo, change the display settings such as Gamma and the palettes, and various other emulator settings and hacks. If you play games which have a Super Game Boy border, priority can be set on how it appears on screen. Goomba has maximum compatibility settings on by default if you choose to not mess with them. You may also save and load states from within the emulator, 
though you will need to access this through the menu each and every time. Finally, you may sleep the console, restart the game, or exit. Through Pocket NES, NES games can be played on the X5. However, a number of considerations should be taken in mind. Since the image is scaled to fit the screen using GBA hardware, sprites and on-screen text will appear to be slightly crushed. The scaling will also have a flicker applied to it, which works better for handheld screens and much worse for larger panels. Sound is inaccurate, and some advanced mapper games lack the full support and will glitch out accordingly. FDS games are also not supported and cannot be loaded. Pressing the L and R buttons will pull up Pocket NES's menu. Here you will be able to tweak options in a similar manner to Goomba. I recommend if you are playing on a consoleized solution or the analog pocket in docked mode to go into the display settings and turn off flicker. You can keep the scaling to have slightly crushed sprites or give the unscaled option a try. If you select unscaled, sprites will retain their original form, but you will need to use the L and R buttons to manually scroll the screen downwards and up in order to follow the gameplay. States can be manually saved and loaded within the menu, similar to Goomba. Through SMS Advance, Master System and Game Gear games can both be played, albeit with some of the caveats that exist with Pocket NES. On the Master System side, you'll have the issue with crushed sprites and sound inaccuracies. FM audio is also not supported. On the Game Gear side, the image is properly centered while filling most of the screen without issue. General game accuracy is pretty good across the board amongst all games. As with the Pocket NES, I recommend you head into the settings and turn off Flickr if you are using a consoleized solution or the analog pocket in docked mode. You may also want to swap the A and B buttons on your controller. You may save and load states within the Emulator Save Memory Manager or save states in game by pressing R and select and R and start. For GBA games that have save support, saving your game will write .srm, .fla, and .eep files. As of the version 1.13 update, the system will move save data from the battery RAM to the SD card every time the cartridge boots to the main menu. These files will be written to the GBA sys slash saves folder. Saves created by emulator will be saved to the GBA sys slash mu save folder. They can be moved to and from the SD card and backed up or transfer to other compatible carts or emulators. Make sure you're matching the file name of the save file to the name of the ROM to get them going. In some cases, such as transferring to the Mr. or the Visual Boy Advance, the file will need to be renamed into .sav to get them going. This concludes the tutorial for the EverDrive X5 and X5 Mini. I hope you enjoyed it and were able to get a couple of cool things out of this video. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Do you have a game for me that you would like to recommend? Any questions for me concerning this video? Let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, consider dropping the sub or a like. Also, why not check this video out? Peace.